Hey, um, I'm doing this off script. I'm just doing this for fun. It's 5.45 a.m. and I'm just kind of bored. So, uh, I've had this PSP for a while. A friend gave it to me a few years ago and uh, I never really used it because I didn't have a charger. Uh, I found a charger for it today. Turns out I had one. I acquired the cable after I got the PSP. Uh, there's only one problem with it. The battery isn't in here. Uh, I have it right here. It's, uh, it, it just doesn't work for some reason. I'm, I have another one in my Amazon shopping cart and I'll be getting to that in a few days. I wanted to uh, show you guys something interesting. This is a UMD. This is the type of storage medium that the PSP uses for games. And this is what a UMD always ends up being somehow. I, I I will never understand why the PSP used UMDs, like little discs, because, I mean, yeah, sure, you can hold more storage on here, but uh, these cases are so flimsy. I only have one game for this, by the way. Uh, it came with the PSP, and that game is Aragon. And uh, I, I, I don't really like anything that has anything to do with Aragon. We just kind of pretend it doesn't exist, so... Um, Anyway, I decided that instead of trying. Anyway, I decided that instead of like ordering a replacement case for this game that I'm never going to play, I thought it'd be fun to try and see if we can get the PSP to read a UMD without the case. So we're going to need to do a bit of disassembly for this, and I've actually done a little cheat. Here. Well, one day I uh, I dropped my PSP, and so like if you open the door a certain way, it'll come right off. You have to disconnect this from the door. I just did that, and I do admire the uh, technical know-how that did go into the UMD, despite you know the absurdity of it using discs in a handheld system that can easily be bumped. If you've used any 90 CD player ever, you know why that's a terrible idea. Uh, so. The disc just drops in there. It's magnetic, so it stays in there. I thought that was pretty neat. So uh, I've been messing with this for a few. So there are two things we need to do. If we want to get the UMD to run without a case, we need to tape down this sensor here. This is a little pressure sensor. And that detects when a UMD has been put in. So we just tape that down. Easy spy. I want to show you how to uh, get the door back on. So you see right here, it lines up right here. Just put it in the right and slide it over a little bit. Do that for the other side, and then it'll clip back on just fine. So we can open that up. And we're just going to place the disc in here carefully, making sure to line it up. And let's see if it'll read. You can hear it spinning up. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to boot into the game because I have no interest in playing this. I just wanted to show you that it does read. And uh, we're going to take things another step from here. I want to see if we can get this to run without the door. Because I've tried it and it doesn't work without the door. Because there's another sensor in here. Anyway, let's take that out. And we'll disconnect the case once again. I did find the sensor. Let's put the disc on. So, it's right around here. There's a little tiny switch that the door will activate. And so I'm just going to poke it with this X-Acto knife. There we go. As you can see, it's spinning. And you can actually see the laser right here, which I thought was really neat. But, yeah, it is it is reading. I, I can't exactly flip this over because uh, there needs to be constant pressure right here. See, if I release, it'll think I open the door and it'll stop running. I do want to try to uh, get that to run without me having to put pressure on it because, I mean, if I could get it to run like this, where it's spinning on the back, that would be really neat. Uh, if we want to do that, then we're going to need to tape this door down as well. So we can just do that real quick. Okay, basically what I've done is uh, I had a <laughs> chewing gum wrapper on my desk and I, I just kind of folded it up and do something that we can just... Wedge in there. Put the disc in. And keeps pressure. 
Look at that. I'm going to get a close-up of that. I have to admit, although it was kind of silly that they decided to use discs in a system that can easily be bumped, such as, and like easily like that, well, I guess it's uh, loaded all the stuff it needs to. Let's go ahead and boot into the game, even though I'm not going to play it, just to keep that disc spinning. As I admit, like from the back, this this looks really cool. Like you're holding it, and that's just spinning. I need to get like a clear, you get like a clear case to put right here. That would be, that would look super cool. You know, clear case, clear UMD case thing replacement because it still needs that for some reason. Yeah, still spinning. Uh, I'm going to get. I'm gonna go ahead and boot out of the game now because, like I said before, I don't really want to play Aragon. I'm planning on modding it for custom firmware. I need a new battery because it won't let me update unless the battery is charged. But I also need a new memory stick because this is only a gigabyte. And so I saw on Amazon there are some adapters that let you use micro SD cards instead. And I have a spare 32 gigabyte micro SD card and I'm just going to use that. So the uh, memory card is empty. What data there used to be on there was corrupted so I just went ahead and wiped it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all that I wanted to say about this. Um, so it's just a neat little experiment. Anyway, thanks for watching.